Father, we praise you today. And we thank you. And we bless you. Glory to God. And we receive our evening offering. We praise you for it. We thank you for it in the name of Jesus. Oh, glory be to God. Isn't, isn't the Lord exciting? Praise you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Oh, excuse me. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. You can open your Bibles with me to Mark chapter 4, if you would, please. <clears throat> this fourth chapter of Mark, beginning with the 14th verse, the sower soweth the word, the Word of God is the subject of this teaching. And all of the other things in it uh, are related to the Word. That's the subject. <clears throat> and Jesus taught about, uh, you know, taught about the soil and so forth. And, uh, <clears throat> uh, there is an, there's, you can easily handle that by saying, um, do a soil, soil sample on yourself. <laughs> are you good soil? Are you good ground? Or are you not? Do a soil sample. Praise God. Hi, Billy Brown. And, and he began to teach on that. But I, I wanted you to see what he said about the kingdom of God. We're going to be talking about the kingdom of God tonight. And the Lord just reminded me of scripture <clears throat> from uh, of the gospel of Luke. Cheer up, little children, because it gives your, your God great pleasure to give you the kingdom. To give it to you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Well, that could go on and on. But he had, when we got born again, he gave us the kingdom. Because the kingdom of God now is on the inside of you, on the inside of me. We used to be outside in people. Now we're inside out people. Amen. When we went to the Lord and said, Lord, we need this. Uh, I need that. Uh, I, 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 what am I going to do if I don't get that? And would you help me with this? You're doing this and he's in here. You're doing this, and he's in here. The kingdom is in here if he is in here. Why? Because he's the king, and he's here. That could have uh, easily been a place for an amen. amen. <laughs> Glory to God. So, so is, verse 26, Jesus said, so is the kingdom of God. As if a man should cast seed into the ground, should sleep and rise night and day. And the seed should spring and grow up. He knoweth not how. He doesn't have to know how. It just works. 
It just works. For the earth bringeth forth fruit of herself. First the blade, then the ear, after that the full corn in the ear. But when the fruit is brought forth, immediately he putteth in the sickle, because the harvest is come. And he said, Whereunto shall we liken the kingdom of God? Or with what comparison shall we compare it? It is like a grain of mustard seed, which when it is sown in the earth is less than all the seeds that be in the earth. But when it is sown, it groweth up and becomes greater than all herbs and shooteth out great branches so that the fowls of the air may lodge under the shadow of it. Amen. So I receive this like this. I see this like this. My seed... that I sow, the seed that I sow into the ground of the kingdom. I don't have to know how it makes it work. All I have to know is Jesus said it. Now, my grandfather was a farmer and a good one. I mean... He was, he, he had, he'd get a crop when other people didn't. Two main reasons. One, he'd stand out there in the middle of that field and take his hat off and pray before he ever plowed. Now, my grandmother could read and write, and she, she was the one that did the tithing. Thank you very much. And uh, my grandfather's, my mother was born in Venita, Oklahoma. Does that tell you anything? And she's, her name is Vanetta. They just, it's the same. They just pronounced it different instead of pronouncing it Vanita. And, but my grandfather, my, 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 he just knew things. Hardly no education at all. But he just knew things. He was a farmer. He had to know the soil. So it was the, where the, the, without the soil, forget the rest of it. Now, once irrigation came on the plains, then the water was in place. And you had plenty of sunlight, but the soil. And I've seen him do it. He'd go out there, after he, after he plowed, he, he'd go out there and dig down a little bit and smell of that dirt and feel of it. And he never would use any sort of an instrument to set the depth of his planter. And they didn't fool with that. After he did all of that, Keith, and dig around, then he'd set that planter. <laughs> there were places he wouldn't sow anything. He'd just go around that. Another thing that was very enlightening to me His rows, his furrows, I mean, they looked like somebody had done them. They, they, looked, they were just straight as a string. And I asked him about it. I said, Popo, how, how you get your rows so straight? Oh, he said, Kenna, you look at a man's rows, you can tell what kind of character he is. If his rows are sloppy, he's sloppy. And I, I remember this. Now, he's a farmer. He's a planter. And he always had a crop. We're sowers. We sow the Word. But then we sow, and accordingly, we sow our seed. 
our offerings. Amen. Amen. And his knowledge of the soil. I was with him one day, and the county agent came by. Now, you city folks don't know what a county agent is, but let me help you. <laughs> that fellow's laughing right. He's country folks. I can tell where he looks in here. Probably says ain't instead of, you know. Uh huh. Ain't you? Don't you? Yep. Uh -huh. The county agent is the one that reads the almanac, reads all of this, and, you know, takes a picture of the moon and, <laughs> and all of that. And then he comes around and he says, now, this is my strong suggestion for what you do in this county this season. The county agent would come by and see Mr. Owens. And then he'd go tell everybody what you ought to do in the county this season. And my granddaddy would laugh and just laugh. He said, that schoolboy don't know what to do. And he said, here I am. I don't know nothing, but, but I know how to farm. I know how to plant. And I know how to harvest. I know how to get a crop. That's what Jesus was talking about in the kingdom of God. I know I've learned over the years. I learned by, in, in the very beginning, from a master spiritual farmer, Oral Roberts, who taught me seed faith, faith in my seed. Seed faith. Amen. Faith in the seed. This is not corruptible seed. We're born again, not of corruptible seed, but incorruptible seed. The Word of God. Yeehaw. <laughs> Glory to God. Amen. Amen. Incorruptible seed. So you're offering seed tonight. Those of you watching online, you're offering seed tonight is going into this ministry in ways that will help it extremely because of damage that occurred during that very unusual season that we just went through. And uh, I'm talking about Texas, you understand, with an ambient temperature of minus four degrees below zero in Fort Worth, Texas, without the wind chill, and the wind was blowing. Tore up a lot of stuff. Amen. But, amen. So you're sowing into that. Amen. And sowing into good ground. Yes. Now, and, oh yeah, uh, yeah th th that, I thought about that a moment ago and the Lord dropped it in my heart so I, and I want to use this as an illustration. Do you know why now, now, just think about this, particularly in the, the olden days. No, they still do it. They put creosote on a telephone pole before they put it in the ground. Why? The ground tries to make it grow. And it'll rot it. That's what the ground does to the husk of that seed. The ground tries to make it grow. Everything you stick in that ground, it wants to grow it. <laughs> That's the reason you use steel posts instead of wooden posts. It'll rot the bottom off of it. And Jesus said that. The earth knows what to do with the seed. The little house we lived in, the very first house that we had, of our own, and uh, we planted one tree right in the middle of the yard. And that thing dried up, and, and it, it, was just, it was just a big stick. And it, it just watered around in the hole. And I thought, that's not right. We need a tree. 
And so I got my Bible and went out there and just straddled it and started reading to it and telling it it was the blessing of Abraham. You are blessed, you little stick. <laughs> I mean, I, could, I, I re- honestly believe I could have pulled that thing out of the ground. And so, and it, it, it started and, you know, we watered it and so forth. And it, we could see that it was going to live. Well, then all, not too long after that, we moved. And we've been back by there one time since. And I was amazed <laughs> that tree just shaded that whole front yard. But I had to talk to it. But the tree knew what to do when the ground did what it did and the Word of God blessed it. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Father, we thank you tonight for the Word of the living God, the Word of the kingdom. And I'm asking you in the name of Jesus, sir, to reveal to each one of us your desire, your plan, the offering that you desire for each one of us to sow into this offering tonight. Yes, sir, I'll do that. Be glad to do that. And I praise you and bless you for it. In Jesus' name, amen. Don't just think one day at a time. One offering at a time. A time. There may be something else God wants you to do. I just, well, I, I was just going along, happy as I could be, and uh, and and I, I was uh, getting. I, I was preparing to send an offering to Tulsa to Brother Hagen, and uh, I said, okay, but. Well, uh, and the Lord said, send Brother Hagin $50,000. I said, okay. Ooh, that's good. Because see, when he does that, he, he's, he's moving on you for something. And so it may be something you want to do over a period of time or something. Whatever he tells you to do. And so I said, okay, I'll do that. I had never seen $50,000 at one time in my life. Now, at, by that time, the ministry had, but then he said, this is a personal offering. Okay. So all of the change that I had when I'd come home, I had a shoebox sitting on the, on the chest, and I just emptied my pockets. That's Brother Hagin's money. That's Brother Hagin's money. And I just put Brother Hagin's money in the box, and then I just, I didn't pay any attention to it. And uh, I, I let the, you know, some, somebody count it and just send it up there. And I was going along. I just kept doing that, just kept doing that. And I thought, I wonder how much I've sent up there. So I called Buddy. I said, Buddy, that was Brother Hagin's son-in-law. Buddy Harrison. I said, Buddy, from this date to this date, uh, how, how much have I sent up there? And he came back and he said, a little over $60,000. I said, there isn't any way. And there wasn't. Yes, because we went back. Of course, the staff knew because they counted it and sent it up there. We hadn't since the 60,000. It multiplied. My Jesus. Yeah, <laughs> glory to God. It multiplied. That's all right with me. Yeah. Got time for one more story? Yes. Well, I, no, I lied. Is this another story? Another. <laughs> <laughs> one, of, one of my strong partners. Now, this, this is, he's a farmer. But now this is far later than my grandpa. 
I mean, now, he's not out there on that old, that old Alice Chalmer man killer that he had. My, my, my grandfather was a farm all man, and somehow he wound up with this old AC tractor and is kind of worn out when he got it, and he just, he didn't like that tractor at all. Then just as quick as he could, he got back into a farm all. Well, a tractor's supposed to be red anyway. <laughs> so anyway, and... Uh, but this man, I mean, you know, he's got the machine and the air conditioning and he's listening to tapes and he's, he's farming by faith and he's, whoa, and I'm preaching on debt free. And he said, boy, stop in the middle of the day. A farmer stops in the middle of the day. He's either sick or something. And his, and his wife saw him, but boy, here he came. He said, we're going to pay this place off, this farm off. He said, this is the only thing we owe any money on, and we're going to be debt free. We're praising God. And they agreed together, and he went back to work. He said, call and find out how much we owe those people. And I, I, if I remember right, they had a loan with a co op or something like that. Anyway, so she called them. We would like to have numbers on the payoff of our farm. Okay, we'll get back to you. Well, she didn't hear anything from them. Time went by. And so she thought, well, what, what is this? So she, I, if I remember, it was a couple of weeks or so, whatever it was, went by and she called them back. I really need the payoff on this farm because we, 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 we won't pay it off. Well, uh, hang on just a minute. So she got the loan officer, and he got on the phone, and he stammered around a little bit. Well, uh, <clears throat> um, we, uh, we don't have any record of your loan. She said, does that mean I don't owe you anything? Um, yes, ma'am, I guess it does. <laughs> she said, would you write me a letter to that effect? He said, uh, yes, ma'am, I will. <laughs> we serve a jubilee God, and he knows stuff. <laughs> Somebody give him some praise here. Glory to God. Glory to God. 